CC Color Neutralizer is found under the color correction category, and this is used to basically balance out improperly colored images or video. So this photo is clearly tinted green, and it was likely color graded and intentionally made to look this way, but CC Color Neutralizer can help us correct for that color shift. And the process of using this effect is by applying it to whatever you want to adjust and then disabling the effect so it's not actually affecting the image because we need to reference the unbalanced image as we adjust things before we turn it back on. We have three color pickers for the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and these are what will drive the correction or the neutralization of the color balance. And the way we go about doing this is starting with the shadows color picker, click on that eyedropper, then find a point in the image that exists in these shadows. So ideally you wanna find something that should be black, but in the case of this photo, we're just gonna find something that's as dark as possible. So I'm just gonna pick this tree that's in the shadows. Clearly it has a lot of green in it. And I could click right now, but it will literally sample the one pixel my cursor is over. If I hold down control or command on a Mac, it will increase the sample size and average that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and click right there. And even though it seems black, it actually does have a little bit of green to it. And then I'll move on to the midtones. I'll find a part of the image that should be a midtone gray, click that eyedropper, hold commander control, and I'll just say this area of the snow and click. That's pretty much a midtone value that should be neutral. And then we have the highlights. So I'll use that eyedropper and go to a bright part of the image like right here, controller command click. And now my sample colors have been set so I can turn the effect back on. And when I do that, the colors all shift. Now it didn't do a perfect job, but it's a good starting point and we have lots of controls to modify it from here. But what this effect is trying to do is basically maintain the brightness values of all the pixels while modifying the hue and saturation of all of the colors to basically white balance the image so that the blacks are actually black, the whites are whites and the midtones are neutral. Underneath each one of these eyedroppers, we have a twirl down menu and these values have been adjusted based on the color sample that I chose but I can individually adjust each one of these. So if I wanna put in some more red into the shadows, I just increase that. Or if I see that there's still more green than I really want in these trees, I could grab the green and drag it back and it's going to affect the shadows portion of my image. Now I think that it should get a little bit more blue and a little bit less red and that's looking a little bit better to my eye now. All right, now I'm gonna go into the midtones and do the same thing. This is snow and it's reflecting off of the sky, so it should have a little bit of blue like it does. So I actually don't think I need to adjust the midtones at all. Let's go to the highlights and that is pretty yellow. The sun is low in the sky, so that might be an accurate color temperature, but let's say I wanna add in a little bit more blue. I'll just pump that up. Not so much that it's starting to get real purple in those highlights but maybe just a little bit more and dial back the red and green just a touch. So now I'll turn that off and back on and you can see what a difference that made. Mainly in the shadows, but that's where we were seeing that green unbalance the most. All right, I'll close up that highlights and the next option is pinning. And this basically pins the black and white values. The higher I increase this, the more it's going to retain the original colors on the black and white ends of the spectrum, ignoring the corrections that we just made basically. So I'm gonna leave that all the way down. I don't wanna pin those black or white values. Then we have blend with original, which is basically just a transparency slider for this effect. And then there's this special category. And in here we have the ability to change how we're viewing this. Currently it's just the final result, how the effect is actually producing, but I can change this to two different views of how this correction is happening. So correction B to W means black to white, and it's giving me a bunch of graphs on the screen. The top one is just black to white for reference, and then we have reference of the shifted values over top of a gradient, just like this one, as well as over top of just a neutral 50% gray value. So this is telling us that we're putting a lot more blue in the blacks and the whites and making the midtones a little bit more yellow. So increasing the red and green. And down here we have a curve graph representing those color shifts on each channel. And if I change this to correction stare, then it's just going to change the orientation of that graph. Let me put that back to final result and then we finally have black point and white point. And this will just shift the black point around, allowing us to simply offset that. And if I switch to our correction black and white, you can see what that's doing. It's just shifting the black point over as well as the white point. Can dial that back, look at the final result again and see how that affects the image. 
So this is kind of a specialized effect, but it does have some handy features. But that's everything for CC Color Neutralizer. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.